In a previous video, we went through how to tell whether or not two molecules are enantiomers or if they're the same. So here's an exercise based on that video. See if you can tell if these two molecules are enantiomers or if they're the same. So press pause, work on this by yourself, and when you're ready, press play and we'll go through it. Okay, so it's assumed that you know what enantiomers are, you remember what enantiomers are, and if not, remember that they're non-superimposable mirror images. There's no way we can rotate, if these are enantiomers, there's no way we can rotate, this, let's say, this molecule on the left to make it superimposable with the molecule on the right. Now, one common way to do this, and it might be even the most effective way to do it for this example is through bond rotation. So you could rotate the bonds on the molecule on the left and see if they're superimposable with the molecule on the right. But we're actually not going to do that in this specific example. We're going to use a method which is going to be a little bit more robust for more complicated systems. We're going to use a three-step method to figure out whether or not these molecules are enantiomers or the same. And it's going to make for a generally faster process. The first thing you want to do is we're going to want to talk about or check the connectivity of each. Remember, connectivity. Uh, when we're dealing with enantiomers, they're stereoisomers, so they should have the same connectivity, except they're going to have a different arrangement in space, and that's where the second part comes in here. So we're going to check R, S for each stereocenter. And the last thing is we're going to double check for symmetry. Okay, this three step method, and we'll go through each of these steps in turn, okay? If one of them's not clear at the moment, hopefully it'll become clear in a second. All right, so connectivity. Let's have a look at this molecule on the left. We've got a carbon, right, in the middle. It's attached to a fluorine, CN, H, CH3. Okay, that's the connectivity of this molecule, how the bonds are connected to each other. Molecule on the right, we've got carbon attached to F. CN, H, and CH3. So the same connectivity, that this connectivity is identical. So therefore, we know that they are not constitutional isomers. Remember, constitutional isomers have different connectivity. Uh, so therefore, they, they have the same connectivity. Remember that stereoisomers have different arrangement in space. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna check R and S for each stereocenter. So this carbon in the middle, here, we're gonna first examine the four atoms attached to this carbon. And we look, we've got fluorine, carbon, hydrogen, carbon. Which of those is the highest, the highest atomic number? Well, that would be fluorine, right? It would be number one. Which of those is the lowest? It would be hydrogen, number four. And we've got a tie, we've got carbon and nitrogen. And to break this tie, we have to go a little bit further and look at which atoms each of these carbon are attached to. In the case of the CH3, it's attached to H, H, and H. In the case of this carbon over here, it's attached to nitrogen, but we actually, just so you know, count each of these bonds to nitrogen. Uh, for every, every bond, we, we count another nitrogen here. So nitrogen, 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 even though they're not, we were, it was only attached to one nitrogen, it's kind of phantom nitrogens here. So nitrogen is, is heavier than hydrogen, so it has a higher atomic number, so this is gonna be number two, and this is gonna be number three, okay? So now we've got our, our priorities. We're gonna go from one, two, and remember how this works. Ordinarily for R and S, we wanna make sure number four is in the back, but there's another little shortcut um, called the single swap rule that'll help us figure out if uh, we have even if the number four is pointing out of the page, we can still figure this out. So one, two, and three, it's going this direction, right? It's going clockwise. However, um, number four is in the front. So we switch, okay? We switch, so it's actually gonna be going the opposite direction instead. So it's gonna be um, counterclockwise. And if it's counterclockwise, that makes it S, okay? So that's what it would look like if number four was in the back, we would actually see that one, two, and three point uh, or go in the direction of counterclockwise. Okay, 
Now this molecule on the right, let's have a look. We've got fluorine, which is number one, CN, which is number two, CH3, number three, hydrogen, number four. And now we can again do the same evaluation. We want to go from one to two to three. We notice that it goes, it goes clockwise. And now number four is in the back. Notice how it's a dash here. So it's clockwise, which means that it's gonna be R. So one is S and one is R. Okay, and because they have the same connectivity, but they have opposite, all, all the stereocenters are opposite. Okay, all, every single time you'll have a mixture of enantiomers or two enantiomers, enantiomers will always have the same connectivity and opposite RS. There's just one last thing we need to check to make sure that these two molecules are enantiomers. We need to double check for actually symmetry of plane, actually it's plane of symmetry. And in this case, it's not, not possible. Why not? Well, we only have one stereocenter. You'll see that planes of symmetry give rise to, sometimes give rise to meso compounds. And uh, that's only a factor where we have uh, two or more stereocenters. So it's not possible here. So therefore, these molecules are enantiomers. Okay, these molecules are enantiomers. That's how we tell. And like I said, you can do bond rotation. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. It's just you'll find a little bit more robust method in more complicated situations is to just check the connectivity and make sure it's the same. Do, do calculate R and S for each stereocenter. And if they happen to be the same connectivity but opposite R and S, then they're enantiomers. Okay, as long as there's no plane of symmetry in that case, it would be a meso compound. Okay, hope this has been useful. We'll uh, do another example in a second.